Hey, it's Zads, and welcome to Zads vs. The Haunted Hilux. The ongoing saga where I tackle the challenges of fixing up a vehicle that hasn't been touched in two years. Today's episode, episode one, we're going to tackle some of the electrical issues in this car, including the lovely smashed out stereo. So, right now, on my way to the local car electric store and I'm going to pick out a brand new stereo for this. Get that fixed up first off and see how we go from there. So I had to find an appropriate sound system to put into this car. After doing a bit of looking online, I decided on installing a Sony XAM AX5000. Found it for a good price locally from a local car retailer. The AX5000 features Android Auto, a 7 inch touchscreen and will fit nicely into where the existing broken stereo is. Well, off we go to pick one up. So unfortunately, that particular car parts store didn't have the stereo that I was after for this car. So I'm off to another place. Go and see if they have one available. Apparently they do in the next town over. So on my way to there. And they did have it. Now I've got it heading home ready to install. Now I've got it home. Let's see what we're working with here. Instruction manual? Oh, and a remote. They still include those damn things. And here we have the stereo itself. This thing's a lot lighter and smaller than the last time I had to install one of these. Then we have the cables and the microphone for the Bluetooth hands-free. Time to go outside and get it all installed. Firstly, I need to get the plastic crap off so I can remove the existing stereo. First, loosen it from the top. You can often do this by hand, but if you do need reinforcement, use a plastic spudger. Don't pull it all the way off though. Once it is loose, you'll need to remove the knobs off the air conditioning controls. Then, remove a tiny Phillips head screw under the middle fan control knob. Then off it comes, leaving the attached cables for the AC and for the hazard lights. They also need to be disconnected. The hazard light switch comes off nice and easy. Just press down on the tab at the top. The AC switch is the same, but the tab is actually at the bottom. Not that that took me five fucking minutes to work out. Look at all that glorious red dirt, only in Western Australia. Now we just remove the four bolts holding the stereo in. Once they're removed, the whole unit just slides out with only the three cables attached. The two cables for power, speakers, etc. are like the AC and the hazard light cables. They have tabs at the top, so you squeeze those down and pull. The third cable is the antenna cable and just pull straight out. We need to keep these two brackets off the sides of the old stereo so we can install the new one. They come off simply enough, just undo the eight screws holding them down and that's it. Hold on to those screws, we'll need them later. Mm -hmm. 
If you're wondering which side the brackets are supposed to go on, well, Toyota has you covered. There are little letters on the brackets to show you the left and right, and the scrapings around the screw holes will show you which way is forward. Because Toyota is stupid, you'll need a plastic fascia kit to install the stereo. Most car accessory shops sell these, as well as eBay. You can even get ones with built-in auxiliary and USB ports. Clear the plastic away from the sides so it doesn't get caught. Always a good idea to keep the plastic on to protect the screen while you're trying to install the head unit. Line the bracket up with the holes in the new stereo. The new stereo will take fewer screws since behind the screen it's only half the height of the original. The plastic fascia kit attaches to the side on the outside of the brackets and is held in by one of the screws. Then screw in the screws. Then try and screw in the screws. And keep trying to screw in the screws. Why the fuck aren't these going in? Oh, come on. Find out that the original screws don't fit, so you need to use the screws included in the box. One eternity later. Yeah. And then take the screws that Sony included. Don't bother trying to use the existing screws because they don't fit. Eventually. Hmm, great. Well, this isn't fucking working because these screws are too bloody small and... Oh, why bother? Fuck me. The fucking thing that just doesn't fucking work because some dumb bloody idiot decided... That's smart. Nah, that one doesn't fit. Okay, so... You're gonna need longer screws. Because Toyota ones have a different thread to the pieces of shit that our lovely stereo expects. Alright, guess we're going looking for bolts. Well, let's go see what we've got available. Oh look, chickens have invaded the workshop. More chickens. Bok bok. Bok bok. Well, of course, there's plenty of bolts and screws, just none that'll actually fit. Well, there's nothing in here either. Fucking around with the bolts in here gave me another idea on how we can fix this. Just grab these nuts and bolts that'll fit right in the holes on the bracket. And now to do some modifications to those fascia pieces. Don't try this at home, kids. So instead of threading the screw through the hole to hold the plastic on, and since we have plenty of space underneath the new unit, I'm going to hold the plastic with these bolts on the brackets and then attach the bracket to the stereo. Magnificent. Looks hell pro. Now I can install the stereo. I got some adapter cables to convert the original connectors to a Sony connector. Saves the effort of wiring it all up. Speaking of wires, I want to hide the USB-C cable so I can use Android Auto. I can hide this cable under the plastic frame which will let it hang from the storage holes where I can then put my phone. So I'll remove this screw, then run the cable through under the plastic, 
pull through the slack. Then put the screw back in. All right, let's grab the wiring adapters and fit them. Plug the adapters in place. Now, before we go on ahead, this annoying system has a park brake sensor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little modification to this cable. We are going to make it interact with earth. Let's hook in that brake wire into earth because fuck the police. Also, this is probably illegal in most jurisdictions, so don't do it. This is purely for educational purposes. I definitely won't be driving this car with this modification. Oh, and look at that. I've just noticed the air conditioner pulley things are all off. That explains why the car is always fucking hot. Great, another thing to fix. Add it to the never ending list. All right, connect the other adapter that definitely doesn't have the modification done to it. Plug it into the back of the stereo. Along with the USB cable. Zads from the future here. Whilst recording this, I forgot a couple of very important steps to finish the installation of the stereo. Firstly, and most importantly, you need to fit the antenna cable. Don't worry, it shoves straight in there. Second is installing the microphone for hands-free calling. I'm sure you can all figure these things out on your own, but the best place to put the microphone is above the plastic inside on the A pillar. The plastic comes off by removing two screws and it's easy, trust me. Run the cable around and underneath and it's done. Anyway, on with the show. Sorry for the interruption, but if you're enjoying this video or any of my other videos, consider subscribing. Every sub helps the channel grow. Also, consider giving this video a thumbs up if you like it. Now, back to the video. Stuff everything in and put the stereo in its place. And let's bolt everything up. Now gently clip the fascia back onto the car. Be careful not to damage the vehicle or the screen, otherwise you might be sad and have a broken stereo. Screw the little screw back in behind the knob and shove the knobs back in their place. These knobs are universal, so they'll fit on any of the three locations.
turn on the key and see if it works. And bam, it's working. Fantastic. Alright, I've connected my phone and we'll go through the process of setting up Android Auto. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Well, that's it, it's working. Another task off the list, now to dispose of the old unit appropriately. Next time on Zads vs the Haunted Hilux. I'll be breaking a drill bit. And I'll be adding some lights to the front of this damn thing. Oh, and fixing the fire hazard that is the electrical system. I'll see you next time. Hey you, yes you, like this video and subscribe to my channel, every sub helps. Also, look at these excellent other videos, like 3 minute booze reviews, go on, watch it, trust me.